welcome to Longshores, and uh, particularly warm welcome to anyone who hasn't visited the dealership before. Um, obviously, we're all very excited this evening because Professor David Wilson has returned for the third time um, to give a talk about his work as a criminologist and also his recent ITV series, Bring Back Ball School. Um, in fact, David asked me to point out that he has his suit on this evening, which he wore as a governor. Um, not sure if anyone had noticed that. We've had a really tough week, and um, we're delighted that she was able to still devote her time and attention to making things go smoothly this evening. Thank you very much, Susan. Um, I'll talk a bit about Borstal, which I know people want me to talk about, but obviously, during the questions and answers, if you want me to um, discuss any of the work that I do as a criminologist, then please feel free to ask me those kinds of questions as well. Um, it's by a regime which was called the Short Sharp Shock. It was very militaristic. The way that England and Wales was going to deal with uh, young offenders was to introduce the Short Sharp Shock. And I think, because again, if you, uh, if you follow my argument about cultures produce institutions, cultures produce the kind of patterns that we've got of murders in world history. And of course, what's the difference? What's the difference between mainland Europe and Britain? Britain never got invaded by the Nazis. Mainland Europe was liberal penal code that exists today in world history is Norway's, and that penal code was written in 1946 by the law faculty of Oslo University, all of whom had been incarcerated by Quisling when the Third Reich invades Norway. And to this day, when I say to some of the students, I say to some of my students, you know, um, Anders Bering Brevik, Anders Bering Brevik. Anybody know who Anders Bering Brevik is? Who, the, the man who shoots. The, the, the white Christian fundamentalist who hates the fact that Norway, according to him, is becoming multicultural as opposed to monocultural. He puts bombs at the government building whilst everybody's concentrating on the fact that things I always argue, and I'll end on this, is it's perfectly possible to have less crime, safer communities, and fewer people in prison. And that would be what I would like to see. And I think we began to introduce that today through bringing back Boston. Thank you. secession crisis in North Carolina. And so really what your question is saying, I think, is, well, why crime? You know, um, and the simple real answer was I played rugby throughout university. And um, what I wanted to know was when I misbehaved as a rugby player, and this is Morpeth, I know you wouldn't like Morpeth. This, you remember I played against Morpeth in the Bring Back Warsaw? And uh, when I was playing rugby in the rugby team at the university, our behaviour was dismissed as, oh, this is the rugby team. Bit of a laugh, high jinx, isn't that lovely? Exactly the same behaviour by young men in Cambridge who weren't at the university was criminalised. And it was that simple reality that made me start thinking, well, how come my behaviour, which is just as bad as what they've done, avoids that label being applied to them, whilst that label of crime gets applied to them immediately. And that was what encouraged me to start thinking philosophically about how, what is this thing called crime? And how can I try and contribute to making people think about that label? And so literally, I did the vibe out on the Friday, Monday I was at Scrubs. And on behalf of everyone, I think um, we've had a really fascinating evening and just like to extend our very warm thanks to David for 
making his way north to the uh, far northeast of England. He lives uh, down south, and um, he's been very, very generous with his time once again, and very, very informative, very thought-provoking. Um, so, if you could give him a big round of applause and then.